I'd like to tell you a bit about quantum bits and quantum technologies. Now, our starting point is ordinary information technology. And what goes on these days in ordinary information technology is that everything, whether it's communication, storage, or processing, everything is done digitally. So information is coded into bits. Two state systems that can have two possible states, zero or one. Now, if we think about computing, then examples of bits inside the processor in a computer, a bit might be two different charge states of a capacitor or a transistor inside a computer chip. If we think about memory, then it might be two different magnetic orientations of a tiny little magnet or a magnetic domain inside a memory disk. And the important thing to appreciate with ordinary bits is that they only have two possible states allowed for them, zero or one. Now in physics terms, we can picture that by saying that the system has a double well potential. So it has a potential like this, and there are two minima here. So let's say it sits in this minimum over here, then that could represent the bit state zero, and if it sits in this minimum over here, that could represent the bit state one. And one of the reasons why digital information is very much favored is that these two states are very stable because they sit in an energy minimum. And in order to change from a zero to a one, you have to actually put in some effort. You have to put in some energy and move the system over the barrier to change it from a zero to a one or a one to a zero. So that's classical bits and classical information. The next thing we need to know is that bits are getting smaller. This has been going on for decades. Roughly speaking, bits get half their size about every two years. And the reason people are doing this technologically is because it makes them faster and it means you can squash them closer together. So this was first observed by Gordon Moore, who is one of the co-founders of Intel who make computer chips. It's called Moore's Law. And so Moore's Law says that bits are getting smaller and smaller. The thing about Moore's Law is it will not go on forever. And it's now beginning to creak already. And the reason for that is that as you make bits smaller and smaller, eventually you're going to get to the point where they start to behave according to different laws. And those are the laws of quantum physics. And that's how nature works at the very small scales. So we don't have any choice about that. We have to live with it. And one of the consequences for bits, when they start to be made so small that they behave according to quantum laws, is that they will start to behave a little differently. So if we remember classical bit, an ordinary conventional bit of information can only be in state zero or in state one at a particular time. However, if that bit start to behave in a quantum fashion because you've made it very small, then something interesting can happen. And in terms of what goes on here, what can happen is that this bit can actually sneak through this barrier. It can tunnel through this barrier. So if it starts in state zero, whether you like it or not, it may end up in state one. And that's a fundamental difference between an ordinary bit of information and a quantum bit of information. Because a quantum bit, or qubit, of information can actually be in state zero and state one at the same time. Now, the technical word for this is a superposition state. And if you like, you can think of it like a musical note. A musical note has a number of harmonics that all exist in that note at the same time, and you hear the lot together in order to hear the note. In a quantum bit, we have two harmonics. We have a zero harmonic and a one harmonic. And you can have states of a quantum bit where both of those are present at the same time. That's called a superposition. Now, superposition states lead to the potential for new quantum technologies. And I just want to briefly highlight four of those. Now, the first of these 
If you take just one quantum bit and it is in a state, a superposition state, where it has an element of zero and a one at the same time, if you measure that bit, quantum bit, and ask it what state it is, it will tell you zero or one at random. You will get a random answer, zero or one. Now, random numbers are very, very important in computing, in cryptography, in numerical physics, and so on. So a genuine source of random numbers is a really useful thing. And quantum physics, quantum bits, provide genuine quantum random numbers. This is just not a theoretician's dream. You can already buy quantum random number generators. The technology already exists. The next bit of technology I'd like to tell you about quantum communication or quantum cryptography. If I have a quantum bit, again, in a superposition state of both 0 and 1, if someone else wants to try and find out the information that is encoded into there, the only way they can do that is to measure it. If they do, they will disturb it. If they disturb it, you can infer that they have been trying to eavesdrop on your information. So this bit of physics underpins the potential for secure communication. Once again, that is not just a theoretician's dream. You can buy quantum crypto systems now. They really exist. So that quantum technology has also got as far as real technology. The next one I'd like to tell you about is quantum metrology or quantum sensing. If you have a number of quantum bits, a handful, let's say about 10, you can prepare certain superposition states of all 10 quantum bits together that would enable you to measure certain external agents or forces more sensitively than you can possibly do with any ordinary measurement apparatus. So that's called quantum technology or quantum sensing. You can't buy that stuff yet. We're not far off. There have been many demonstrations of the principle in laboratories in uh, various places in the world now, but that technology is just a few years away, let's say. The final thing I'd like to tell you about, quantum computing. Imagine now that you have a whole processor that works according to the principle of superposition. So all possible states of that quantum processor can exist in superposition at the same time. If you could build something like that, that would be immensely more powerful at computing than any current computing or technology that we have and are likely to have working according to conventional laws. Now that is one of the things that I research on at the moment and not only me but colleagues at Leeds and many many people all over the world. So uh, watch this space for the progress in that area. Thanks for listening.